Good morning, Belleville First UMC. Good morning, Pastor Greg. Whether you are online or you're here in person, we are glad that you are here today as we get the opportunity to follow our Holy Spirit and worship God together. If you haven't yet, take a look at the bulletin. Please do so. There's plenty of announcements and prayer requests in there. We hope that you would update your information during the week. That would be awesome. And then send us any updates as well. And on this Father's Day, we also want to celebrate and thank our fathers and thank all of those who have played a father-like role in our lives. We can lift up and thank those people who have made a difference and who continue to do so. Thank you, dads. Your tie is coming in the mail. One of the dads that we got to celebrate yesterday was uh, here just yesterday for his service. The flowers that are around our place today are in memory of Doug Brown. And I just hope that you would take some time and and lift them up as they go through that time. Um, It was fun to have a previous pastor back in in town for that. Uh, He even got a tour of the parsonage too. So we made sure that he got to do that as well. But it was a good time, and it's it's a good thing to keep uh, the family in our prayers. And also today, I want to talk a little bit about June 19th or Juneteenth, and the role we as a church and as individuals can participate in it through the opportunities of both, first of all, repentance, and then decisive, eventual freedom. Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. And through Juneteenth, I think we can do both. For those who know the story, uh, June 19th was the day in 1865 when 250,000 Texan slaves were given freedom by the U.S. Army more than two years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. The Heritage Foundation said it well, I think, when it said we can use Juneteenth as a way to acknowledge our past faults, heal current divisions, and move toward a future as a nation more united. Celebrating the American principle of freedom, being applied consistently to all people, coupled with the biblical principle that every single human being is made in the image of God, We can celebrate this national holiday by considering maybe a few things. First, respectfully attending or volunteering for any Juneteenth celebrations to learn more about our past, our hope, and our future. Every county is doing something, and we invite you to check those out in your area. Second, Support black-owned businesses and church ministries that are trying to heal the wounds of prejudice in all of its forms. Many of the ministries and missions that we support here at Belleville First are doing just that. And third, please realize that the work of freedom continues. The U.S. church is still largely segregated in its worship and work, especially on Juneteenth, Be an advocate, be a student, be truthful, and then let's do everything we can do to heal racism and promote freedom on June 18th and on every other day, too. Amen? Amen. Amen. So after all of that then this morning I've been told through the grapevine and and it takes this how long it takes it was was your mama that told on you but it's Esten's birthday today (laughs) many of you don't know all of Esten's story but he's been taking care of himself taking care of mom taking care of us um, every single week, and he does it out of the goodness, out of his heart and soul. And so uh, we are thankful for him for all that he does for Belleville First. And I think it is appropriate um, to, to sing happy birthday this morning. Judy is going to lead us on the piano with that. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aston. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Aston. And now that we have been updated with all that good stuff, I invite us to stand as you are able, take your bulletin out, and join in our call to worship. On this Father's Day, as we come to worship, we thank God for all our fathers. On this Father's Day, even though they may not be fathers themselves, we thank all those who kindly father others. On this Father's Day, when our fathers may struggle with fatherhood, we're thankful for God our Father the most. Morning, church. Morning. Thank you. Uh, happy Father's Day, for one. And thank you all for the kind happy birthdays and everything. I, uh, I can't see myself spending, uh, playing at any other church than uh, sharing worship with you fine people here. So I appreciate it. So please continue to stand and sing with us, raise a hallelujah, as we... Uh, spend this wonderful Father's Day together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than my unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee, I raise a hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery, I raise a hallelujah, lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive. This is where you people repeat after me. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Beautiful. Sing a little louder. 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 
sing a little louder. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roll up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise the hallelujah. I raise the hallelujah. You 
usually my greeting to Eston, and I didn't get to do it before the service, and I really wanted him to know how much I love him on his birthday. So that's our special greeting. I just have to beat him up. And aren't we blessed to have their, our, our musicians with us? So, so very blessed. <laughs> we really do love each other. <laughs> I trust that as you've been sitting here, you've read uh, the prayer request on the screen and those in your bulletin and those you have carry in your heart uh, as we go to, him, to the Lord in prayer to lift those during this hour, but also in the coming days and the coming weeks to remember, take these with you and to remember them in your prayer life. Uh, will you pray with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, you who showed us such great love by sending your only Son to take our punishment, you who used your power to raise him from the dead, and you who used him to show us the way of your love, thank you for creating us and loving us enough to give us this great gift. We thank you for fathers, for our birth fathers, for those who stepped in to love and care for us when those fathers were unable to, adopted fathers, stepfathers, for special uncles, neighbors, teachers, friends, those who have continued to love and nurture us through our lives. Thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we become like disobedient children, when we stomp our feet like rebellious teenagers when we slam the door and refuse to follow you. Oh Lord, forgive us. Thank you for your guidance, your love, your acceptance. We thank you for accepting us into your family. We pray for each person on our prayer list and for those we live silently in our hearts. You know, and only you know each situation and each need May each of these persons and their caregivers be especially aware of your presence, your healing hand, your love, your direction. We thank you for all that you are doing, that have, you have been doing, and continue to do in their lives. We pray for world leaders in our own country and those around the world. May there be awakening of your love for nurturing and directing our leaders. We pray for those caught up in conflicts. Oh, Lord, we don't know what that's like, but may their needs be met. Oh, Lord, please let there be peace on earth. We pray for this congregation, for Pastor Greg, for Mark, the new chair of our Ad Council, for those who call to this place home, for all of our leaders. May we be welcoming to all who would enter here. May we be loving so that others can see you and us and long to be part of your family. We continue now in the prayer that Jesus taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Marilyn and Judith. That was beautiful. And Evan, the slide just took me to a secluded place by a lake. It was beautiful time of worship. Our scripture today comes from Proverbs. It's uh, chapter 6, verses 20 through 22. And of course, I'm reading from the NIV version. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. So ends our word. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And oh yes, they took the gig. (laughs) 
Everybody say thank you, Tag. <laughs> Finding help within our families is one of the ways God has given us to get through tough times, much like the small bone family finds themselves in. There are times of doubts, times of frustration, times when we couldn't find faith if we saw it with our own eyes. Or maybe your family is one of those that's the source of all those issues. It's your choice, I guess. It reminds me of a story. A mom had won a toy when she was shopping. So when she got home that day, she called her five children together to see which one would earn the unexpected gift. Being that it was Father's Day weekend, she called them together and asked, when it comes to your father, who is the most obedient? The children all stared back her in silence. Then she asked, okay then, who never talks back to their father? Again, the kids appeared to be mystified by the question. So she tried once more. Well, at least, is there one of you that has ever done what dad tells you to do? Giving up on the expected prize, the youngest child responded for them all. Oh, just give us a break and give dad the toy. <laughs> and now you know how you got that Father's Day present this morning, that toy that you got, right? And probably enjoyed so much. It's a fun story. Because a lot of times God has indeed given us our families to help us, but also to eventually so that we can help them to. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. When we look through the book of Proverbs, uh, King David's son, right, Solomon, who according to the Bible was the wisest person that ever lived, and possibly a few other authors, authors who wrote some of what we have for Proverbs, um, wrote these pieces of proverbial godly wisdom for a couple of reasons. First, I think he really did want to pass this wisdom, his wisdom, what he had learned, what he had experienced, down to future generations, including future kings, and of course, especially, future family. And second, I think there is also a sense in Solomon that he wanted to have the ultimate collection, right? All the wisdom, no matter who the author was. And this is why I think we have the book that we have in Proverbs. But that's also why we have Ecclesiastes. And that's also why we have um, what other books of the Bible, like Job, which are wisdom books as well. So when it comes to family then, and especially our little piece for today, Proverbs 6, 20 through 21 reminds us that there's an emphasis on there being a family, however that family is defined. Do you, as your father and your mother have taught you, follow their command, don't forsake their teaching. If you do, they will guide you, they will watch over you and instruct you well. If you don't, all the trouble that Solomon got into, remember the hundreds of wives? Yeah, that's because he didn't listen to David and Bathsheba in the first place. That could be our downfall as well, if we're not careful. So when we get ourselves into whatever situation may be, when we lack the faith of that moment to get through whatever we are facing, God is there saying, I provided your family to help. Turn to them and let 
them help. Help from our families then is necessary, especially when we lack faith in the moment. God has given us our family in whatever way defined so that we would never be alone. GotQuestions.org, which is one of your pastor's favorite online sites, next to a couple others, and you can mention, I'll mention those at a later time, Bible Gateway, right? But GotQuestions.org has a great quote on this that I want to share with you that speaks to this type of family. They wrote, a good Christian family is not perfect. It is one that seeks to follow biblical principles in every circumstance, that cries out to God for help, and that desires to provide a nurturing place of stability and growth, even in the midst of hardship. I hope that's been your family experience, but please know that I know that for many of us, it has not been, because none of us have a perfect family, especially because we're the ones in it. But with God, thankfully, all of us are his family. So the question then, I think, is simply, what does God's idea of family look like? Thankfully, the Proverbs and some other scriptures have some answers for us. And first and foremost, like our passage for today, God gave us parents. From the honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land, the Lord your God is giving you commandment, right, of if Exodus 12, 20, verse 12. Through the Proverbs passages found in chapters 5 and 23 and 31, even in Matthew 19, even in Ephesians 6, we find this honoring your parents' instruction given many times. In fact, in the Bible, it's almost eight times when we can actually point it out very clearly. Jesus himself, while at times, spoke about the need to follow him over our families, Luke 12, 41, Matthew 10, 34. Jesus did spend over 30 years honoring both his heavenly Father by keeping the commandments without sin, and by obeying his parents here on earth, Mary and Joseph, who brought him up as they promised to do just before he was born, and then when Jesus was dedicated in the temple after. Even back then, family was necessary. Family was provided, and honoring parents seemed to work. Parents are there to help us get there, so we honor them. And the one thing that us parents have to commit to is to teach our children Christian values. Children need strong families to learn these Christian values, especially love, grace, and forgiveness. And the first place they learn those from is you and me. The oft-quoted um, Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Start your children off in the way that they should go, and when they are old, that they will not, not turn from it. Some kids take a longer time than others, if you're wondering. And Genesis 18, 18 and 19 even says, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations of the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his households after him to keep the way of the Lord. Abraham's family became God's family, and for that reason, we are now Abraham's family too. But this also comes with a responsibility. Because generations upon generations will be determined by what we do and what we fail to do. The responsibility then was Abraham's, and now it's ours. Children need 
strong families, to learn Christian values, especially those of love, grace, and forgiveness. And I think when we give that good advice, it's best that we give it in love. And that is maybe the most important. It seems that advice given in love is always better than any other. The familiar words of Proverbs 15.1 here are helpful. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word just stirs up, stirs up anger. Thank you. We know this. And Paul covers this in Ephesians 6, 4, where he writes, one of my favorite verses, I used to use it against my father all the time. Fathers, do not, what's the word? Exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. I used to use that against my father until I became a father. (laughs) Twice over. Then I realized what exasperation really meant and what could be caused by our children, right? Especially when they're supposed to resemble us anyway. But even if you have in those most intolerable moments, it's still our job as parents, our job, to advise them in love. Isn't it? I mean, Jesus made this incredibly clear in John 13, 34, proving the point. So now he says, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Notice Jesus did not say love God, love others. He said now, love each other. Remember what the next line is? Just as I have loved you. Uh Uh-oh. That's a completely different standard. Many have the golden rule, many religions do, as a standard for living a good life. We do also. But notice here, this is not that. Jesus is saying, incredibly, something more. As I have loved you is the new rule. It's a higher form of agape love that God first showed to us as our parent. Advice then given in this love that, as Jesus has loved us, kind of love, is always better than any other. Which brings us to that last point then. Whatever or whoever your family may be, God has a plan for each family. Here's the point. God put each family member together for a purpose. All families, with all their faults, are still family. Three particular verses here may be helpful. 1 Timothy 5.8, for starters. Hidden in this letter to his protege, Paul, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, puts a high value on valuing our family and warns us not to take our families for granted either. That's why he wrote, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Ouch. Now, we're not going to lose our salvation over this, I'm sure, but what Paul is trying to tell Timothy, and indeed us, is for us to fully understand that each family needs to be provided for by each one of us Together, each person in that family, especially in our own household, is there because it is God's plan for them to be there, including you. Please think about that for a moment, because Jesus then takes it a step further. Colossians 3.13 says, when it comes to family, and this goes for church families too, bear with each other and forgive one another. And if you have any grievance against someone, forgive. As the Lord 
forgave you. Do you hear the higher standard again? And that's why way back in Genesis 2, right? Moses wrote in verse 24, this is God's plan for our families, is that a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife because they become the one flesh that God has intended. It is all about God's planned and God's provided family. God put each family here for a purpose. All families, even with all of our faults, are still family in the eyes of God. And I guess maybe that is our takeaway for this morning. Families, although often flawed, damaged, and defective, can still be helpful. We know that we can honor our parents, teach Christian values, advise in love first, and know that God has a plan for every family, even ours. But in order for that to work, we all must come to a particular understanding. Our families, who come in all shapes and sizes, are necessary to our personal faith. And help from our families, then, is necessary. When we lack faith in the moment, and God gave us family in whatever way defined so that we are never alone. Thanks be to God for our families, especially when we have yard work that has to get done. <laughs> Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we do thank you for our families. We're thankful that you are our Heavenly Father. You have shown your love to us, forgiving our confessed sin, extending your merciful grace, and asking for our holiness and our obedience in return. Once we were not family, but now because of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, we are. So we thank you for creating all kind of humankind and for showing us the importance of the family you have given to us. Forgive us, we pray. When we take those relationships for granted, and as for your family, we commend to your care all the families found in all of our communities, our nations, and our world. May every home be a place where love is felt and grace is practiced, shown in all the helpful ways that we have called, you have called us to live together with you. And where they are needed the most, send your Holy Spirit to bring your direction your comfort, your strength, and your healing as we become more and more like Christ each day to a world who desperately needs the family Christ offers to us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you believe that to be true this morning, I invite us to stand and join in our response hymn, Blessed Assurance. Let's stand and sing together as we're able.
the ushers are coming forward now, uh, one, to hand out the registration pads, if you would sign in to let us know that you are here today, and also to collect our tithes and offerings, just giving back a portion of what God has so freely given to us. God, thank you for being our Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be fathers as well. Use these gifts to build your family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you, uh, all you dads out there plan on going uh, fishing and golfing now because it's going <laughs> to be in the high 90s all next week. So. Get it done now. Get it done now. <laughs> As we prepare to go out and uh, celebrate Father's Day, please continue to stand and sing with us. They'll know we are Christians. Awesome God. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the love. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. So as we leave this place, may God be in our heads and in our understanding. May God be in our hands and the work we accomplish with Christ. May God be in our feet so that we may feel the joy of dancing with the Holy Spirit. But most importantly, in our hearts this day, may each of our families know that we love them, we need them, and that we are following God on the way. In the name of the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. And the church says together, Amen. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He 